the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome, everyone, as we gather on this sixth Sunday of Easter to celebrate the resurrection of the Lord. We have been in this, this time of, of Easter glorying in the fact that Jesus, who suffered, died, and was buried, has risen, and he is with us and continues to be with us now until the end of time. But in a special way, he is here with us in the celebration of the Eucharist. So let us prepare ourselves to encounter Christ as we come into communion with him. Let us ask him now to grant us the grace of his mercy and forgiveness. I confess to to Almighty God God, and and to you, my brothers brothers and sisters, sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed failed to to do. do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, that what we relive in remembrance we may always hold to in what we do through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Some who had come down from Judea were instructing the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the Mosaic practice, you cannot be saved. Because there arose no little dissension and debate by Paul and Barnabas with them, it was decided that Paul, Barnabas, and some of the others should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about this question. The apostles and elders, in agreement with the whole church, decided to choose representatives and to send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. 
The ones chosen were Judas, who was called Bersabbas, and Silas, leaders among the brothers. This is the letter delivered by them. The apostles and the elders, your brothers, to the brothers in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia, of Gentile origin, greetings. Since we have heard that some of our number who went out without any mandate from us have upset you with their teachings and disturbed your peace of mind, we have, with one accord, decided to choose representatives and to send them to you, along with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, who have dedicated their lives to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are sending Judas and Silas, who will also convey the same message by word of mouth. It is the decision of the Holy Spirit and of us not to place on you any burden beyond these necessities, namely, to abstain from meat sacrificed to idols, from blood, from meats of strangled animals, and from unlawful marriage. If you keep free of these, you will be doing what is right. Farewell. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. reading from the book of Revelation. The angel took me in spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. It gleamed with the splendor of God. Its radiance was like that of a precious stone, like jasper, clear as crystal. It had a massive high wall with 12 gates where 12 angels were stationed, and on which names were inscribed, the names of the 12 tribes of the Israelites. There were three gates facing east, three north, three south, and three west. The wall of the city had 12 courses of stones as its foundation, on which were inscribed the 12 names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb. The city had no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gave it light, and its lamp was the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. Yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me tell you I am going away and I will come back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to you. Lord Jesus Christ. You know, when Jesus speaks in the gospel today of those who love me, he's referring to his followers. For Jesus, those who love me is, is another way of saying my disciples, or, and those who believe in me, he's saying Christians, the followers of Jesus. Now, the relationship between the Christian and Christ is essentially a love relationship. That is why John said in his writing in the scriptures, I do not call you servants any longer, meaning the words of Jesus, I do not call you servants any longer, I call you friends. Yet most of us think more in terms of serving Jesus kind of like a boss more than, than relating to him as a friend, where there, are, there is a limit to what a boss can de demand from you not so much in, a, in a, a friendship or an intimacy relationship. It, it extends, it goes beyond. Now, one thing we know about love is that when people who love and care for one another, they want to be with each other. They want to be together. But Jesus is not physically present. We can't physically see him. We can't touch him. And in the gospel, Jesus is preparing his disciples for his departure. And, and he shows them how they can keep a love and a relationship with him alive, even though he's physically absent. In the scriptures, it says, those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them. And we will come to them and make our home with them. So if you love Jesus, keep his word. If you love Jesus, follow his teachings. And this then allows us to know God's special love for us and will help us to recognize the permanent presence of Jesus and the Father with us. And in this way, the, the, that vacuum or the, the void that is left by the physical absence of Jesus here in our world, it's filled by a, a divine presence, which is as real or even more real than the physical presence. Our part in this whole process is to focus on keeping the word of Christ. But that being said, how, do we, how can we be sure to know the implications and the meaning of the word of Christ in this, this ever-changing world that we live in? How can we be sure that what Jesus, of what Jesus would do and how he would act in the presence of all these various situations that we have in our, our modern daily lives? Well, again, we, Jesus foresaw this difficulty, and he provided for it. He, he said, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. And if that is so, what do we make of the situation in the world today where thousands of Christians are filled with the Holy Spirit and come up with thousands of different answers to the same question? Does the Holy Spirit contradict himself then when we have so many different uh, viewpoints, so many inspirations, you could say? And the answer to does the Holy Spirit contradict himself is, of course, no. 
The Holy Spirit is with us individually, but the Holy Spirit is given primarily to the church, the community of the church, and through the church to us as individuals who are members. And this is what we see in the first reading today from the Acts of the Apostles, where there were disagreements were arising in the early development of the church uh, among the Christians, but the disagreements are, are resolved through dialogue and community discernment, and not through every single person consulting with the Holy Spirit privately. And in the end, when there was a question, the result or the res- resolution began. In the, it is the decision of the Holy Spirit and of us as they resolved that dispute that was brought to them, for instance, concerning circumcision. The word of Christ continues to live and resound in the power of the Holy Spirit that speaks in the church and through the church. So let us pray especially for the gift of church unity so that together we can all discern what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church in our modern times so that we can bear unified witness to the life-giving word of Christ each day. You know, we're talking about love and and, love. I'd just like to relay a little story about a married couple who decided they were going to go out shopping, so they went to this department store. The wife loved to shop. She could just browse and browse. Well, the husband didn't so very much, so they went. And while they were in the department store, well, they got separated. So the husband kind of meandered around in the store, and after a while, he got really tired. He was just really ready to go home. So he started looking for his wife, could not find her anywhere. So he was just getting tired and just had had enough. So finally, he, he sees this young, attractive woman, and he approached her and, and said, excuse me, miss, would you stand next to me for just a couple of minutes? And the woman looked at him and said, well, well, why, sir? Well, he says, well, every time I start talking to a young, attractive woman, suddenly my wife appears. Problem solved. <laughs> Please join with me now as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father, for ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us man and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, suffered death and was buried, and rose again in in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Lord, proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus told his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. We bring before the Lord all that threatens to trouble our hearts, turning to the source of everlasting peace to bring that peace into our hearts for the church that we may always seek the guidance of the holy spirit as we witness to our faith in a constantly changing world we pray to the lord lord Lord, hear hear our our prayer prayer. that the peace christ left with us may be extended to our neighbors across the street across the country and across the earth we pray to the lord Lord, hear our prayer. For legislators and judges and all who make or interpret laws, may they in sound mind and good conscience deliver decisions based on God's will. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that we may always love the Lord and keep his word and be a visible sign of God's dwelling place. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who seek the wisdom and intercession of our Blessed Mother, that during this month she will plead for us before the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the people of Ukraine, for those who are bereaved, injured, or who have lost their lives, and for those who have lost loved ones, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have gone before us in faith, that they may be brought into the peace of God's presence with all their sins forgiven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Steve Abdo, for whom this Mass today is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. O loving God, you promise to dwell with all who love you and keep your word. Do not let our hearts be troubled as we place our trust in you. We ask you to grant this in all our prayers through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who is risen and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the the Lord Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and all of his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as together we now acclaim.
are indeed holy, O Lord, and you are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George Leo, our Bishop, Gregory, our Auxiliary Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Remember Steve Abdo and all who have died in your mercy. Father, welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her beloved spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you, Father, throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now, at our Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, together let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, Lord, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Lord, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us share with one another a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called now to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of the saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for celebrating Mass today on this sixth Sunday of Easter. We are drawing closer and closer to the conclusion of this Easter season. Next Sunday, we will celebrate the Feast of the Ascension of the Lord, which is a great celebration in itself. Usually, it, years before, it used to be celebrated on Thursday. Now, it's uh, moved to Sunday. So, we'll, we'll celebrate that next Sunday. But thank you for, for being here today and offering this Mass and gathering together with us in prayer. I thank our ministers who assisted at Mass today, Julia, for being our lector, Mikhail for manning the cameras, and of course, Eva and David for lifting us up in spirit through, through music. If you have a, a, a birthday or anniversary or something special going on today or this coming week, our best wishes to you. I know yesterday our, our children from our school, our eighth grade class from Our Lady of Las Vegas school graduated and we're very pleased that they did, and we're sad to see them go, but we wish them well. They go on their new journey into high school and other, other uh, joys and challenges this, this 
life will bring towards them. We ask you to remember them in your prayers as, as they go forth into life. And if those of you are carrying something heavy on your heart, please know also that our prayers go with you as well. And so, until we meet again, and as we go through this sixth week of Easter, celebrating the resurrection of Christ, let us do so with joy and with the Lord's blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is now ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.